Today we are going to discuss about ICDS 7 on government grants. What this ICDS 7 talks about and why this is relevant for all of us to study that I am going to discuss in this ICDS. So listen till the end. Now let's start. First thing, what is government everybody know right? Government here means state government, Telangana state government, Tamil Nadu state government, central government. Right? Not only the central and state governments, but also local authorities are there na? in Hyderabad municipality is there, like every place municipalities are there. They are also called as government. Government bodies are there. Like example, NABAR is there, National Bank for Rural and Agricultural Development. Correct? Same way, there are so many bodies, like governments. Institutions are there. For research, there are so many bodies. For technology development, there are so many bodies. For promoting MSMEs, like National Institute of Entrepreneurship is there. Uh, MSME Ministry is there. So many government bodies are there. All are called as government. So here, don't take in a narrow sense what government is. Government just don't say central government, state government, over. No. Even local authority is and any national and international government bodies are also treated as government here. Now, okay, government means understood. Now, what is a grant? We should understand this now. So, basically grant means a support or in simple language a financial aid. Now, you can name it in any way. You can say it is a subsidy given by government. You can say it is cash incentive. You can say it is waiver. You can say it is duty drawback. Like sometimes government gives back the taxes paid. Right? It is called as duty drawback. Sometimes what happens? Reimbursement may be given by government. Sometimes it may be a concession for purchasing something or taking some facility. So, government grant can be through any name. So, I said six words, right? Subsidy, cash incentive, waiver, duty drawback, concession, reimbursement. Correct? So, it can be in any name, nothing wrong about it. Suppose government purchased the shares of any company. Government purchased the shares of any company. Can we say it is a government grant? The answer is no. If government invested in the shares of any company, it is shareholding, it is ownership, it is not grant. Aisaan nahi kar raha hai government. Right? So, it is not grant. It is investment for some return. It is not grant. Now, come to the next point. So, we understood what is government first thing. Central government, state government. Any body which is local, national, international from government. Second, we understood what is grant. Now, how to recognize this grant, correct? Recognition of grant is also a very big criteria. And please understand, grant may be given in cash or sometimes it is given in kind. Sometimes a facility, infrastructure may be given. Sometimes a land may be given. Sometimes some license may be given. Some or the other way, government will aid, support and that is government grant. But it is not for dana, dakshina, dharmam, no. It is with certain conditions to achieve certain goals. Like example, government gives to the corporate sector lot of grants and support to set up industries in rural area. But in return, government says that you not only have to set up industries, but also create employment to the people in that area, also create infrastructure in that area, also give basic facilities like electricity, water in that area. So, some or the other conditions government lays down. If with such conditions any grant is given, or any conditions if the grant is given, then it is government grant. It may be given in cash or kind, not an issue, but Conditions should be there. 
Now that conditions may be fulfilled in the past by the enterprise, then government may have given the grant, or government will give grant so that you satisfy the conditions in future. It can be any way. Like suppose I did some lot of social activity and developed a village, then government will say, "Hey Ganesh, you did great job, so we are giving you grant." So you would continue the same work in the same village and some other villages also. So this way you should understand what government grant is, right? It is with the conditions which may be satisfied in past or which are to be satisfied in future. If suppose government gives scholarships to the student for education, it is not government grant because government is not expecting something in return, right? Same way, old age pensions are there, widow pension, disabled pension is there. Government is giving nothing expected in return, so it is not government grant. Usko government grant nahi bolne ka, right? We will not call it as government grant. Shall we continue? Now, if suppose government is purchasing from your undertaking certain goods, for you it is regular trading activity. Then government purchasing. And making payment for it is not at all government grant. Are it is trade, correct? Understood. Very good. Now, how the recognition should be? Now, for recognizing it, first important thing is there should be some reasonable assurance that you will fulfill the conditions, and the second thing you will receive the money, right? Many a time the businessmen don't fulfill conditions. Many a time suddenly government change, they cancel the grant. So these two things, if they are reasonably assured, sure, then only recognize the government grant. Otherwise, don't. Next thing, that when to recognize. Now, income tax department will say. As early as possible, because for them it is an opportunity to tax. But ICDS says very clearly that okay, you recognize as early as possible, but don't delay beyond the date of receipt. So, are you received the money? Ab aur kya chahiye, bhai? What you want further? You received the money from government. So now compulsorily you should recognize the government grant in your Income tax returns. You cannot say that ah, I will recognize later. Are you received the money? You should recognize. Ha, if you have recognized before the hand only, no problem. But at least at the time of receipt, you should have recognized it. This clarity you should have. Shall I take it further? Now, how the treatment should be? Various circumstances, situations come, and the treatment may differ in each situation. So, how the treatment should be? Suppose the government has given the grant to purchase some plant and machinery, furniture. So, in this case, it is in relation to depreciable asset. Then, whatever the cost of the asset is there, from that this grant should be reduced. Suppose you have already some plant and machinery, there is already some block. Now you got the grant from government. So anyhow, whatever the purchase price of the depreciable asset, you will add to the block, and the subsidy what you got from government, the grant you got from government should be reduced from the WDV of the block. So is it first time? First time you are purchasing asset, then only you got the grant, then reduce it from the actual cost. If your business is running, you have a WDV of block, then reduce it from the block. Okay, very good. Now, if the grant is not in relation to the depreciable asset, suppose government gave you land for infrastructure development and setting up of factory, so it is a grant given. Not in relation to depreciable asset. It is given in relation to land for purchase of land. 
then what to do then you have to spend some money to satisfy the conditions of government correct and it is done over the period of time maybe 3 years 5 years 10 years correct whatever the grant received that should be treated as income for that respective period because you have to satisfy conditions suppose example in the 5 years you are going to satisfy the conditions and you will incur the expenditure and you will show it as expenses then your government grant should also be shown as income proportionately over that 5 years period right if it is relating to depreciable asset only in that case we will reduce it in from the cost or wdv but if the grant is given for non depreciable asset then you will show it as income over the period which you will take to satisfy the conditions sometimes what happens government gives grant you purchase depreciable asset you purchase non depreciable asset you also spend for some revenue items then what to do if this type of situation comes then only you have to give a proper ratio ratio that what is depreciable asset related expenditure and what is other expenditure whatever is relation to the depreciable asset that you have to reduce from the cost of the asset or from the wd as the case may be but whatever proportion is in relation to non depreciable asset treat it as income over the period okay treat it as income over the period shall we go forward now what we were discussing suppose sometimes suddenly government has to pay the money to revive the businesses suppose yes bank disaster whatever the scams happened during the congress term and suddenly the bank had to suffer a lot the directors were engaged in fraud priyanka gandhi was engaged in fraud and now suddenly the fourth largest bank in india has collapsed government has no choice has to protect it because the trust amongst the people about the banking sector is the biggest asset to protect suddenly government had to pump in some money of course government also took the help of psbi icici and hdfc banks but if such type of situations happen and government suddenly to protect you from losses protect you from closing down protect you from liquidation government pumps in some money in a particular year then it should be treated as income for that particular year clear yes sir in all other cases it should be treated as income for the proportionate period for which you have to satisfy the conditions right okay suppose you get a grant not in cash but in kind then what to do non monetary grant you got suppose 1 crore worth land you got for 10 lakhs rupees from the government then treat that 10 lakhs only as the cost of the asset right you cannot do anything with the 90 lakhs which you did not pay this way you should understand if it is non monetary asset you got it as grant from the government sometimes what happens you don't satisfy the conditions then you have to reimburse the grant to the government okay we will repay it but how the treatment should be done for income tax purpose when we got the grant for depreciable asset we reduced it from the actual cost now when we are paying it back we should add to the actual cost or wdv right simple as that no big rocket science in all other cases 
till now we consider it as income now we will consider because we are repaying it our money is going out it is expenditure for us so we will treat it as expenditure deduction that's it what is there in it last thing disclosures so how we treated the government grant in relation to depreciable asset we deducted it from the cost if there is a reimbursement because we failed to satisfy the condition then we added to the cost suppose if the grant is treated as income then we showed it as income if we repaid it showed it as expenditure these are all the things again we should properly show it in disclosures but when we disclose we will not just show that we added we deducted we also have to write what conditions we failed what conditions we satisfied right so some proper detailed disclosure should be shown that is what we discuss now we have come to the conclusion of icds on government grants because government grants is sometimes treated as income and mostly given to the businesses that's why it has to be discussed right second thing when it is in relation to depreciable asset so we have to reduce it from the cost so for calculating depreciation also it will have an impact so that's why also we discussed this and they created the standard so i feel now you are clear why it is connected to pgvp and other sources this is the reason so that's it in this icds lecture on icds 7 on government grants prepare well we'll come up with the next lecture on icds 8